For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the Earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Join us this fall at Step Out, Walk to Fight Diabetes. Bring your friends, family and co-workers to walk with thousands of people from across the country and help us change the future of diabetes. The money you raise will make a difference. Together, we can stop diabetes one step at a time. Register today at 1-888-DIABETES or visit diabetes.org slash step out. You said. Yeah, come on, you promised. Well, the deal was you had to finish your homework first. Okay. Throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Tips on staying involved. Just one of the many ways PTA can help enrich your child's learning experience and life. Join us today. PTA. Every child, one voice. Making sure playgrounds are safe. Just one of the many ways PTA can help you create a healthy environment for your child. I'm fine. Join us today. PTA. Every child, one voice. Hello, and we're back. I'm here with Toon Fooley. My name's Jeff Rothman, the host of The Other Side, a program of community counseling of Bristol County. And off camera, uh, Mark, we were talking about um, the empowerment of musicians to, can we, we touch upon that a little bit more? We talked about that earlier. Yeah, well, we like to sort of spread the message of hope that uh, even if you're, uh, you're basically in the mental health system and you're being taken care of, uh, we can take care of each other, too. We, we try to model ourselves as uh, people who got back to work to a degree and people who value other mental patients, uh, that's a word that people don't like to say these days, as old-style mental patients who uh, haven't had a ch an opportunity to join a group make some money and uh, in the cases of the uh, in the cases of the classical I have all different people playing with me at different times sometimes three people sometimes two uh, all different and, and I'm in charge of giving them all the music getting it all together get the rehearsals so that gives me a sense of power it, it's supposed to uh, be an example and people will come to us and we say we'll give you an audition you pass the audition you can join us, you can make the money, you can go on to our summer camp, we, all these different activities, our business meetings and so forth, um, and we, we're constantly bringing new people in. How do you get the word out for new people to come? That's a good question. Well, if we advertise, we have a, quite a bit of uh, mailings that happens, um, well, a lot of word of mouth. Yep. Uh, when we go to, for instance, when we go to a gig like this, we say, if you think that you've got an act that you can play for 20 minutes, either with somebody else or by yourself, then you should try to come into our offices and make an audition. See if you can be uh, a musician with tune foolery, and uh, it's, things really start to happen once you pass that audition. You know what I want to ask you is, do uh, you have folks who sing with in the instrumental as well? You have some singers? Oh, sure. sure. Now, what, what kind of music do you play? Are we across the whole spectrum, rock and roll, mm -hmm. jazz, the, ho the whole... Yeah, folk. We have uh, folk musicians, uh, different style rock and roll. I don't think we have a rapper yet. You don't have a rapper? I don't think Should so. I do a little bit right now? <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I, I, I couldn't do one. Some oldies in minutes. country, <laughs> too. Country stuff and f folk, particularly old type folk. Uh, like and, from this. and this is, this is open to anyone uh, across the board in the state that is dealing with the mental health diagnosis. Uh, they're more than welcome to audition for us. Uh, we have a website, yeah. which is www.tunefoolery, T-U-N-E-F-O-O-L-E-R-Y, tunefoolery, www.tunefoolery.org. 
And uh, people are more than welcome to, uh, you know, look us up and get in touch with us and follow through. Uh, how many musicians are with the group? We have about 50 people who are involved now, and uh, as I say, the more the merrier. Uh, absolutely. Um, Paul, off camera, we were talking about stigma. Stigma, you know. stigma is one of the main uh, is one of the main issues that we deal with. We want people to recognize us as as creative people, as successful people, as 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 wonderful people, and not have to approach us with this stereotype uh, that you know the mentally ill have been dealing with for so long. We we try to present ourselves in a positive light and try to combat the stigma that is so prevalent. Uh, and, and is leveled against the mentally ill seemingly from all directions. Do you think, though, over the past 20 years it's improved? To a degree, but I think there's a long, there's a long uh, road uh, ahead of us before people's attitudes really change dramatically. Now, when you, I have a question. When, you, when you're doing a gig, do you, is there an introduction that says, you know, we're a group of... Yes. How do you... How do you that's a little sensor. How do you handle that? When well, you... we just basically say that we are people who are dealing with psychiatric conditions and that we are consumers of psychiatric services and we make it clear to the audience and we always get a positive response, which is a wonderful thing. It is. It gives mm -hmm. you a, must give you a sense of well-being. Mm -hmm. um, Rick, what I wanted to ask you, um, what did I want to ask you? Oh, about, um, we have an education outreach. Oh, sure. Okay, uh, yep. Uh, a component to the group and that's where we go into schools organizations and talk about mental illness per se uh, as musicians and as consumers and we're doing that uh, pretty in the fairly near future we're going to be going into a high school and giving this presentation and do a little music sort of like what we're doing here and uh, so that that feels good that's that's gratifying to do that well Paul and I were talking um, th this week alone the week of the taping here you have three gigs going on today yes so what, where, where, where are they? Are they at, is it school? Where, where's the gigs? Well, we've got one at the World Trade Center in Boston. We've got one in Danvers, and we've got one somewhere else that I'm not exactly certain where yeah. it is. This is it. This is the third one, isn't oh, it? Oh, there you go. Oh, I think yeah. we have something else going oh, on as well, well actually. Us. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. So you guys are, what's the furthest destination you've played at? Well, we've been out, uh, out, out well, actually, Presque Isle. Prescott, yeah. Maine. That was an overnight. Prescott, yeah. Maine. Mm -hmm. We were down in New Jersey at one point. Stayed right. there overnight. Yeah. Right. Stayed <laughs> New Jersey gig, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you, how do you carry the uh, equipment? If, when you have, say, 15 of you, 10 of you, how do you... Well, actually, we only have several people on each gig. Uh, usually, we have between two and three people on a given gig. Uh, we, we stagger it according to what the venue requires um, for uh, their particular request as far as the music is concerned and usually uh, there's only two or three people on a g given gig unless there's a trio or, or a couple of quartets or something to that effect but um, you know we we try to get as many musicians out as often as possible but it's not a group of people per se okay yeah now is, uh, do you uh, play a lot of original material as well as we no, do no? Ha we do have a lot of musicians who are quite adept at writing their own music Rick, what, what do you like to play? What's your favorite thing? Uh, I have like a lot of the old uh, rock songs from the 70s or so. I do throw in something here and there, like maybe I do one flamenco piece or something like that, maybe uh, Simon and Garfunkel. But, uh, He's like billed as Rock and Rick. Rock and Rick. Rock and Rick. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm billed as Jump and Jeff. <laughs> no, I'm, I just made it up. Uh, so, Mark, what do, you, what do you like to play? Because that's a very unique instrument. I, I don't think yeah. I've, I've ever seen... Well, these are just plastic copies of... Uh, I have real wooden ones, and uh, when you play this one, we have we put three of these together: a great big one, that's really? a bass, and then the tenor one that's like this, and then this one. So we'd be playing medieval type music, like from the time of Josquin de Pre, and uh, those European composers, the British, William Byrd. So we would play these short pieces. Uh, we're going to play at um, in July. We have a gig doing that at the. Uh, What's the name of the place? King's Chapel. I've yeah. played there twice. I'm going to play it for the third time. That is a big, that's a big deal to play in public at King's Chapel. Where's with, King's Chapel? King's Chapel is right downtown by Park Street. Oh, okay. It's that, you know, that old cemetery. It's, it's colonial. It's a colonial historical landmark. It sounds so beautiful for this type of old music. So I play this, I play this uh, 
Irish, usually I have a guitar player with me and a cello-like thing. It's called a viola da gamba. Yep. Uh, so that's a trio. I, I occasionally play solo, not very often. I play pair two flute duets when we get the real wooden ones out yeah. there. That yep. We have a volunteer that can play all of these different ones. So we have a harpsichord player. We have a, and we just mix and match them, but we have to put together at least a half an hour, sometimes a whole hour of uninterrupted mu classical music. Boy, that, that, you have to learn what a second wind is in well, that case. <laughs> that's a good segue. Let's hear a second wind. Let's okay. uh, hear another tune from you, if you don't mind. This is the alto recorder. Okay. And this is going to be another one of those uh, Irish things. Yeah, as you were playing, I had I had a thought. Did you guys teach yourself how to play? Are you self-taught? No, I've 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 been taking all kinds of lessons since I was 11 years old, and I took I took flute lessons. I, I took 10 years of, of uh, group recorder lessons, so I'm very well taught. It's a wonderful sound. I love that. It's very soothing. It gets yeah. right into your soul. So I think at this point we're looking at uh, Rick. Could you uh, play us out? What are you going to be playing for us? Okay. I know what it is, but I don't want to give it away. I'll be doing an old folk song that uh, everybody knows, but they probably know it uh, as it was done by Eric Burden and the Animals called House of the Rising Sun. All right, take it away. Very nice. 
Well, I want to thank you guys for coming in today to uh, talk about Toon Foolery. You want to mention again, uh, Paul, the website where people can... The website is www.toonfoolery, T-U-N-E-F-O-O-L-E-R-Y, Toon Foolery, www.toonfoolery.org. Thank you very much. And that's another edition of The Other Side. We will see you next time, folks, and take care of yourself and each other.